my boy family has been involved in some form of the arts. A collection of the family's work will be given for permanent display at Bundanon. Federal Cabinet is expected to decide on the property by the end of the year. There's every reason to expect a positive outcome. It seems art is news when large sums of money are involved and the fate of a couple of expensive pictures has attracted attention this week. For the first time, the federal government banned the export of an Australian painting and Sotheby's moved in on Alan Bond. When Alan Bond paid a new world record price of $67 million for irises at a Sotheby's auction in New York in 1987, the world gasped. But Sotheby's had jointly financed the purchase. Fears over the future of Bond Corporation has seen the auction house take possession of the painting. It was removed from the Art Gallery of Western Australia and is now in a secured secret location overseas. Next month, Alan Bond's Manet, Le Promenade, will be auctioned by Sotheby's in New York. It's expected to raise $18 million and discharge Bond's 25% debt on irises. But definitely not leaving the country is John Glover's The Bath of Diana. It set a new Australian record price for a painting at auction when it fetched $1.76 million. But now the federal government has refused an export licence. It says the painting's just too valuable to the nation's cultural heritage to leave. But there's not always money in the art market. Last week, Christie's sale in Sydney failed to excite buyers. One of the main attractions was this small work by Charles Condor. It was painted on the lid of a cigar box and was passed in at $190,000. Christie's estimate of a quarter of a million dollars seemed like a puff in an empty bank vault. Perth's Outrage 89 Festival burst into life yesterday in the central city. Thousands of people converged on Forest Place for an opening celebration of theatre, puppetry, dance and music. From small beginnings in 1982 as Perth's Fringe Festival, Outrage has grown to include 77 events over three weeks. With an emphasis on innovative Australian arts in every genre, Outrage 89 continues in Perth and Fremantle until the 28th of October. An impressive addition to Adelaide's music scene has made the long journey from England, but not in one piece. Its complex assembly has begun in the Adelaide Town Hall, as John Ovenden reports. The 19th century style organ, worth $1.3 million, took 45 craftsmen two years to build before it was dismantled for shipping to Adelaide. It's the biggest order the Suffolk Company has fulfilled this century. The maple, oak and cedar frame will take another month to complete. Then will follow a further two months of acoustical testing of every one of the organ's four and a half thousand pipes. The six experts, four men and two women, who are now responsible for the organ's assembly, have been attached to the project since its first designs. We do seven year apprenticeship. We, we live with the organ from the, the first board through the mill right to the finish. So even though it looks it's very complicated, we know what's going on. It's a very versatile instrument. You can play anything from Bach and books to who do the great 18th century composers through to contemporary composers. I think it's marvellous, yeah, and, and the citizens of Adelaide will be well pleased. And this is how the organ will look and sound by the end of the year. Also here from England is an Australian collection of wearable art which was sent to London for last year's bicentenary. The exhibition is now at Sydney's Powerhouse Museum and is likely to be shown in the United States and Japan before returning to tour the rest of Australia. Good night.